Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Karen O'Donnell, Clinical Program Consultant and Physical Therapist with Accelerated Care Plus. Today's webinar is meant to discuss infection control procedures as it applies to your ACP equipment, especially with an increasing need to treat patients in their rooms. With that being said, the agenda today consists of an overview of ACP's recent tip of the month, reviewing infection control procedures as it applies to your ACP equipment. These recommendations are based on the guidelines of the CDC and the EPA. That being said, please note that we strongly recommend abiding by your own facilities, policies, and procedures above all. I'll also review with you how to contact our remote clinical services department and remind you where to go to order ACP supplies. Then I'll follow with a demonstration of how to apply the infection control protective barrier film and tubing to your ACP equipment. So first I'm going to get started by, by sharing my screen with you to review some ACP documents. This is the most, most recent tip of the month, reviewing infection control procedures. I want to first go over the two different types or levels of disinfection for your ACP equipment. One is low level disinfection. This is used daily to clean equipment by wiping with germicidal disposable wipes and letting the equipment air dry. It kills most bacteria and some virus and fungi, cleans and removes organic material. The next level of disinfection is intermediate level. It's used following wound care, urinary incontinence protocols, or whenever the equipment is contaminated by physiologic fluids. Another instance you would use intermediate level disinfection is if the patient is on isolation. In other words, if you're putting on protective personal equipment, so you're putting on a gown, gloves, face mask, etc. You would also want to protect your ACP equipment. The first step in intermediate level disinfection is using a germicidal wipe, such as the ones we provide by PDI. They're called Super Sani Cloth Germicidal Disposable Wipes or Sani Cloth Bleach Germicidal Disposable Wipes. Please note they both qualify for emerging viral pathogen claims per the EPA's guidance to registrants. Therefore, these products can be used against the 2019 novel coronavirus when used in accordance with the directions for use against human coronavirus on hard, non-porous surfaces. There is more details about this on both the EPA and CDC websites. One of those details is something called List N, which I'm going to show you. List N is a document on the C, excuse me, the EPA's website. It's a 21-page document that shows all of the EPA registered hospital grade disinfectants. The PDI wipes that ACP has is on this list. But if you happen to have a different brand of germicidal wipes in your facility, I wanted to provide this list for you so that you can check to see if your wipes combat the coronavirus. And by the way, I will be emailing out to you all the documents I'm referring to today. If we go back to the ACP tip of the month on infection control procedures. The second step in intermediate level disinfection is applying your protective barriers, which is what I'll be demonstrating in detail later. Um, but if you want to reference it after the webinar today, you can find the steps of how to put on protective barriers in your ACP manuals for your equipment. So this one here is an Omniversa manual. And I'll pull it up on the screen for you. 
So on page 57 of the manual, you'll see steps of how to use protective barriers on your ACP equipment. Next, I wanted to review with you how to contact clinical support. So there is a hotline. You can call it our 1-800 number and select option two. They do also have an email address, which I will email out to you later today. And then in terms of ordering supplies, you can contact customer support at the 1-800 number or you can email them. Lastly, I wanted to share with you our supply order form. This is really a nice reference because it does have all the pricing of the ACP supplies. Some of the infection control supplies here are highlighted in yellow for your reference. And like I said, I will be sharing all of these forms with you via email. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And now we're ready for the demonstration portion of today's webinar, so let's get started with that. First, I wanted to review with you the supplies that ACP has to offer in terms of infection control. We have our protective tubing. This will be used to thread your lead wires through any type of cords or cables. Next, we have our barrier film. This is used to protect any portion of the equipment the therapist might need to touch during the treatment, such as the control panel. We also have our PDI Super Sani Cloths. This is one version, the box form, where they come in single-use packets. The other version is one you might be more familiar with. It's a tub version with a purple lid. So there are some other supplies as well that I'll go through as we continue here. First, I'd like to demonstrate how you would set up your levels of disinfection on the diathermy. So we'll start with that. I will bring that in for you. So you can see I've kind of gone ahead and set up the majority of the unit just for time's sake, but did leave a few pieces to demonstrate. So in terms of low level disinfection, that would be me going into a patient's room who is not on isolation precautions. I'm not gonna be setting up a wound care protocol or an incontinence protocol with the risk of bodily fluids contaminating the equipment. That being said, you above all want to comply with your own facilities, policies, and procedures. So we're basically making recommendations for you in terms of infection control. So I would go ahead um, for low level disinfection, wash my hands and put on gloves and then Take a Sani wipe, wipe the unit all over, and then let it air dry. Discard my Sani wipe and my gloves, and then I'm good to go to set up my patient treatment. Secondary level disinfection involves more steps. So what we would do is, again, wash our hands, put on gloves. Then I would take a Sani wipe, wipe the unit down, discard that. Then I would take two, three more, and I would wipe the unit again and let it stay wet for a good five minutes. You might even want to lay the cloths over it. Then let the unit air dry. I discard my gloves and my candy wipes, wash my hands, or use an alcohol-based hand rub, and don gloves again. Now I'm ready to apply my protective barriers. So I'll start with the plastic tubing. As you can see, I've already applied it to the coax cable and also to the power cord, which I'll grab to show you. Okay. 
So here's my power cord threaded in the plastic tubing. Then I'm ready to move on to my barrier film. And remember, you're going to use barrier film to protect whatever might potentially be touched throughout the treatment. So I've pretty much covered the entire control panel where I would be touching. I'm going to take one more piece of barrier film. And it's nice because it's perforated, so it's easy to tear. And place that on the remaining portion of the control panel that's uncovered. Then I would also want to put my barrier film on the knobs, parts of the drum, I, or excuse me, parts of the arm I'd be touching. And then think about anything else in the room I might touch, a pen perhaps to take notes. So then I could use some more barrier film for that. Finally, I need a plastic cover for my drum. So that would be a shower cap. These are one-time use only. So I'd place that on there. And then once I've covered everything, I would discard my gloves, wash hands, hand rub, don new gloves, and then I'm ready to set up my patient treatment, which with the diathermy will run anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on which protocol you've selected. So we would let the treatment run, then I would change my gloves again, and I would be ready to start removing all the protective barrier. For time's sake, I'm not going to do that. Um, but once I got all the barrier film off, the plastic tubing, the shower cap, I would then discard all of that. Along with my gloves, I would wash my hands or hand rub, and then I would don new gloves, and then I would be ready for the last step of my intermediate level disinfection. So I would again take a sandy wipe, wipe the unit down, discard it, take one, two, three more, however many you need to get the unit wet, let it stay wet for five minutes, and then air dry. Then I've completed my secondary or intermediate level of disinfection. So then I would follow by washing my hands. So that covers your diathermy unit. Next, let's review the Omniversa. So I'm going to jump right into secondary or intermediate level disinfection because we did cover the low level disinfection with the diathermy. So I'm going into a patient's room. I'm planning to put on my protective personal equipment. I'm going to put on gloves, a gown, face mask, etc. I also want to do the same for my equipment. So what I would do is wash my hands, put on gloves, and then I would perform my intermediate level of disinfection. Take the sandy wipe, wipe the unit down, discard. Take one to two more, wipe the unit, make sure it stays wet for five minutes. So even perhaps laying cloths across it and then discard, discard those along with my gloves and I'm letting this air dry. Now I would wash my hands or hand rub, don a new pair of gloves, and apply my barrier film. As you can see, and protective tubing. I have already done it for the majority, just for time's sake. Um, but I did leave some parts uncovered. So I have barrier film here on the dial, which I would be touching during the treatment. This I did have to trim, so you would want to have a clean pair of scissors on hand. I did not cover the control panel or the touch screen. So I would place that on here. By the way, this is a four by six um, piece of barrier foam. There are actually other sizes available. Then I would ask myself, okay, is there anything else I'm gonna to be touching? The cart handle, perhaps the ultrasound gel bottle, a pen, and get all that covered. Then I move on to my plastic tubing which is what I would use to protect my lead wires. I've gone ahead and done that. So what I find works best is having a long piece of the plastic tubing and then where the lead wires split, having another couple smaller pieces, you want to make sure you're covering the entire 
lead wire and also the white wire that's leading into your electrode. This method of doing this nice, especially if you're doing, for example, sensory tens and placing one on the neck, one on the forearm, where the parent, patient is experiencing radicular pain. I would also want to cover my transducer cord in plastic tubing as well. One product I haven't shown you yet are the sheet for the ultrasound. These are one-time use. So it looks like this. And then I'm going to show you how you would put this on your transducer. So I'm going to go ahead and just thread this right on here. I'll show you what that looks like. Then I just do one more self-check. Did I cover everything that I'm potentially going to be touching or that bodily fluids might get on, on the machine? Um, <clears throat> one more thing. I could put protective barrier and plastic tubing on is the patient safety switch. So I can put some tubing on the cord and then barrier film here on the switch itself. Okay, so now that I've covered everything, I'm going to discard my gloves, put on new gloves, do my patient treatment. The treatment will vary depending on the protocol you pick in terms of time. Once the treatment concludes, I'm going to put on new gloves and then I'm ready to take off all of my barrier film, all my protective tubing. Once I do that, that's all gonna be thrown away along with my gloves. I'll wash my hands, hand rub, put on new gloves, and then I'm ready to perform my final step of intermediate level disinfection with my standing wipes. So once again, I'll wipe the unit down discard the wipe, take another one or two wipes, get the machine wet, let it stay wet for a full five minutes, and then let it air dry, discard the wipe and my gloves, and wash my hands. So that concludes the demonstration today for the diathermy and the omniversa in terms of how to apply your protective tubing and barrier films. So if any of you do have questions, please feel free to email either myself, your CPC, or contact our clinical support hotline. In closing, please know that we are here to support you and do not hesitate to reach out to us. We really appreciate your partnership and your dedication to patient care. Thank you so much for joining the webinar, watching the webinar, and have a great rest of the week. Thank you.